Ah uh, yes, welcome to this PSN30 Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going through all the tools in Photoshop and today we're up to the Sharpen tool which is located here right beneath the Blur tool. You can bring out the Sharpen tool and for the record, I think that the best way to sharpen an image is to use some form of selective sharpening. Personally, I don't use the Sharpen tool for that. I'll do something like apply a Smart Filter using Smart Sharpen, right? Apply Smart Sharpen to a uh, Smart Object layer, and that allows me to mask that sharpening exactly where I want it to go and add more sharpening in one place and another, things like that. But that does not mean the Sharpen tool is completely useless. I do use it every now and again. Um, the thing I don't like about it, as I've said with some of these other tools, is it comes across as non-destructive. It really isn't that non-destructive, though, because of this Sample All Layers option where we can do something like create a new layer and we can apply our sharpening up here on our own new layer. You can see, I mean, we've over sharpened it obviously, um, but let's talk about this. If you shut off sample all layers, we're up on our own layer, a new layer here. Obviously the sharpen tool does nothing. Let's tick on sample all layers. We also have this protect detail. If we shut that off and we over sharpen, you can see we get this very like Photoshop, uh, Photoshop version four kind of really broken down, I'm not, uh, Moir effect, I don't even know what it is. Um, it doesn't look good though. So if we turn on protect detail, um, we just, at least if we sharpen it too far, I mean it still looks pretty bad, but it's not, it's not like that. So protect detail uh, keeps us safe from that. But notice too, actually, let me just over sharpen again. Notice when I over sharpen, see all those bright colors being introduced? When we see them coming out, obviously this is an extreme application, but if they're coming out now, that also means that when we just sharpen a little bit, there's some color fringing in there. So how do we combat color fringing? Well, sadly, there's not a lot you can do about it unless you're sharpening on your layer directly and you use the luminosity blend mode. Because you can see here now, if I use the luminosity blend mode, I don't get the colors. All I do is get some white. Well, that's fine because all of that can just sort of masquerade as a little bit of highlight on the edges of whatever object already has highlight or a little bit of shadow on an edge that already has shadow but that requires me to paint directly on my image layer and I can't do that even with sample all layers. I'm still going to get colors being drawn out as you can see here um, when I'm painting on a new layer. So that's how you use this, the, the smart sharpening tool or not the smart sharpening tool, just the regular sharpening tool. I wish there was a smart sharpening tool. You can uh, set the strength of the sharpening. So if I turn this down just a little bit, it just does a little bit of sharpening, right? And we can apply less and less sharpening as we go out from the center of the flower, just like so. And we're doing this all up on its own new layer. So if we need to additionally drop the opacity, boom, we can do that. And there's before and there's after. We've just applied a little bit of sharpening to the center of the flower. Obviously, at any point, you can right click, change your brush, shot, brush size size and brush hardness. We don't need to do that here. Um, and that's pretty much it. So we got different blend modes, the strength, you can sample all your layers and then protecting uh, your image detail as well. So for the sharpening tool in Photoshop, that's it. Get it, got it, good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.